Hello, uh, this is Mike from Mike's Arcade. We got a uh, Donkey Kong Jr. on the bench today. It came in, uh, it's reported that it has no picture and no sound. So, um, came in in two parts uh, and there was no rainbow cable. So I put a rainbow cable on it and we'll hook it up to the power supply and to the monitor and we'll see what we get. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to get anything, but we're going to try. So let me uh, dim the lights and we'll put this up on the monitor. And see what we get. Alright, so we had a brief flash and then nothing. Let's put it all in. Uh, so it looks like it tried to boot and then nothing. So let me try that again. Let's see what happens here. So it's starting. Uh, we're not quite sure. So when I get a board like this, one of the first things I do, uh, because because I have them. I install a, it's a high score save kit. Uh, this is one of my braze kits for Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. And I put a jumper on it and I have an image for Donkey Kong on one side and Jr. on the other. And I just do this first thing, especially if I get some kind of random picture, just to make sure if it's not a, uh, you know, a, a RAM problem or something like that. Something simple. So uh, I'm going to remove the Z80 CPU. And I'll take my kit and install it just like a normal high score save kit. Push that sucker all the way in. And I don't know if it's going to boot up in Donkey Kong or Donkey Kong Jr. It doesn't really matter. But let's, uh, let's go back up to the monitor, turn it on and see what we get. All right, so looks like we've got two bad ROMs. No, one bad ROM or RAMs. One at 3B and 4A. Wow, if that's what the problem is, that'll be very simple. Hmm, let's see. Four A. And 3B. That's pretty simple. So I need to look up. I need to go get some 2114 RAMs. And then uh, let's do this. And basically, those 2114s, excuse me, you have to see. Oh, there we go. So this is 4A. And this is 3C. So I'll, uh, let me see if those work. With the kit, it, it just gives me a big clue. There was, there was nothing on screen. Just a flash, and then it disappeared. So, excuse me, it's 3B and 4A. So, um, let me pause and we'll take a look. Okay, so let's see. We uh, we found that 3A, excuse me, 3B and 4A were both giving us problems. Oops, uh, let me get back up. I've got some 2114 RAM here. Oh, so that's different this time. Completely different now. Hmm. 
Aha! There we go. Alright. Yep, still the same. So, alright, let's do this. I'm going to heat up the desoldering station. Most of the time I'll use the desoldering station to take out all, you know, all the solder and then try to take the chip out. If the chip gives me any resistance, I'll just start cutting legs because it's not worth trying to save a... It's not worth trying to save one chip and ruin the board. So sometimes these are a little difficult to come out, other times they come right out. Keep my desoldering station on about oh 750 degrees. That's what it's set to. This is an old Hacko uh, 472D, and I just set it to that temperature, and it's always there. Right, let's put this back down. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but this is the first time I've used this camera. It's a, it's a, no, there it came right out, no problem. It's a um, Samsung S5, so it's an older camera. All right, I'm gonna put that in and just solder right back in. Desoldering my soldering station or my soldering gun. Right, that's just one bad chip. Let's see. Oops, you can't see what I'm doing at all, can you? years I've been breathing this stuff in, but I recently got this uh, nice uh, fume extractor, and it sure seems to make, uh, make life a little easier, a little bit cleaner. You can see when the smoke goes right into that instead of into my lungs. Oh, cool. Whoops. Right. Move that up. And let's see what we get. I only replaced the one. I like to do just one at a time. And it's simply because it may not be that the RAM was bad. It might be that there's some other problem. 
causing it not to be able to read the RAM. And that will, you know, make it so when we boot it up, we'll get the same error. And let's see if it's different. We had a, we had a D. Whoops. Gosh, we are really in far. Sorry about that. No wonder you can't see. That's pretty terrible. Let's try this again. All right. Huh. So we've got a completely different error now up on there. So that means I failed. <laughs> Not the first time. All right, let's do this again. We'll check my work. see exactly what happened. Probably nobody else could. Let's see if you can see that. Kind of hard to see through this. Well, I'm not sure if you can see or not, but um, I replaced this RAM at 3B, and we're going to fire it up and see how it looks on the monitor. Let me turn this off. All right, 3B is good. We still have an error on 4A. I don't know if you guys can read that or not. It's kind of hard up there. Anyway. We come on back down here and we'll change that other RAM chip. I haven't done any repair videos in quite a long time, and when I did, they were just real brief, mostly mostly just showing what had already been uh, work that I'd already done, and it was basically for customers so they could see their board working before we shipped it back. So I've got a bunch of you know one minute, two minute videos up on on uh, YouTube. They basically are just for customers, but uh, I thought I'd try something new this time. So let's remove this 4A. You know, a lot of people they don't really like these high score save kits. They don't they don't think they help. But you know, you saw I had a blank screen. Pop that sucker in, and it gave me some error codes. So I'm all about whatever whatever gets you there. You know. If the kit doesn't work, then then you got to start, you know, pulling out the fluke and checking checking all of your, uh, your voltages, everything else. But you'd be surprised how many times a high score save kit from one of Braze's kits has just uh, just really made life easy. Wow, I feel pretty good about this. There, these chips are coming out pretty easy today. Got another new one, we'll pop it in. This is the 4A, it still has one, a bit that's not being read. So we'll turn that over. Grab my uh, soldering gun. A little bit of solder off the reel. Tack the corners. Sometimes you can't reach over and do this, so you'll if you've got a chip in the middle of the board, you, you almost have to just get, add some solder and, and then just, you know, like this, and then kind of just hope it melts in the corner. Or bend over a, a leg. And let's see, you see all that smoke we're getting? Yeah, you probably can't, but I can. So let's see, let's see if we can go in a little, a little closer. Work 
Turn that up there. Hopefully you can see it a little better. What I'm doing. And I'm going to bring in the, the fume extractor again. I don't like to breathe these anymore. solder bridges this time. Yay! And we'll clean that up. Put it back up here. Put this back out of the way. And we'll double check. All looks good. All right. I need a better camera holder because it's kind of hard to go up and down and get all of this stuff. You know. All right, so we're back on. Everything's put back together. We added the ribbon cables, put the rainbow cable, plugged in the JAMA adapter, and we'll pop up here and see what we get. Oops. Looks like we're missing blue. Now we got it. Looks like we got game. Wow. Very cool. That's exciting. I love when a repair only takes a couple hours. Let's see. Oh, no sound. Oh, there is. You hear it? It's real low. Okay, so it's only some sounds. The digital sounds are really low. So that tells me exactly what it is. I guarantee that's a... Let's see, let's come down here. I'll cut this board again. Alright, we've got... Oh, it's kind of hard to see. But right, right here. This is an LM324. These things go bad all the time. Um, I don't know why, but I guarantee that's my problem because you got... Wow, okay, so you've got climb. So you've got, you've got all the analogs or the analog sounds which are generated by this section over here and up in here. But what we're missing is everything from this 80305. It's really, really weak. So generally that means LM324. Let me find one of those and I'll let you watch the game board for a minute here while I, I will get a chip. But it seems to be looking pretty good. I don't see any glitching or anything else. I think I need a another holder that will allow me to do larger angles here, you know, up and down, because uh, we're not getting a real good clear shot of the of the board, and we're not really getting a get good clear shot of the monitor. But anyway, let me find an LM324. <clears throat> so, going through my trusty box of LM parts. There we go. You know, when I first started doing this, I, I kept, I would just wait and then figure out what I, what I thought I needed, and I'd buy, you know, 10 a piece, 
little half tubes about, you know, this long. Boom. And then uh, I decided I need a tube of each. So I try to keep a tube of each stuff now, or at least a partial tube. And then, uh, And when I have a partial tube, then it's I just keep every you know I have a box of stuff that's just all LM parts or a box of stuff that's 74 LS. Let's go back over here to the board and a box of you know different parts for different kinds of games. I try to keep them relatively together, you know, but can't always. All right, so this is the LM324. I could probably just jump it and it would sound fine, but I'm just gonna replace it because they tend to go bad anyway. And I'm pretty sure that's what it is. You can hear the sounds. You can uh, you turn it all the way up and you got sounds. So. This is a little preamp that just just as uh, all the digital sounds go through, you know, like uh, all of the background music, the long fall sound, um, you know, that coin coin up sound, a bunch of that stuff all comes through this chip. You know, when, the other thing is I used to use solder braid on these and, and just take solder, solder braid to each one, heat, it, heat up the joints. But let me tell you, if you clean one of these things, if you've got one of these, uh, it makes all the difference in the world about being able to replace chips. So let's see if this is actually loose. Let's see if that, yeah, look at that. I didn't have to pry that at all, just take it out. Let's see if we can actually, no, I don't think we can read it. Anyway, yeah, it's an LM324. All right, now I have this wonderful little piece of equipment here. I use this all the time. It, all it does is, it's an IC pin straightener. Put the chip in, you know, because normally chips, they kind of have a, a V to them like this. So the legs, you know, they're not flat and they won't fit in the holes without bending them. So I, I usually get one of these things and just, you pop it in and press it and then it, it takes the legs and it, it makes them square. If you can see that, instead of, you know, sitting in an angle. Makes it so much easier just to pop it in the board. Alright, it goes right here. Hmm. Wow, that's weird. Okay, so there's the LM324. Let's grab some solder. I wonder if I can back up a little bit, make, make it larger. Nope. Okay. I don't know if you can hear me or not. This is all all an experiment to see if we can do these. I may have to. Uh, I may have to buy some new equipment just to do these videos. But I'm going to try this one, see if I can edit it together, and hey, show you how I fixed a Donkey Kong Jr. today. Look at all that smoke. I'm still getting used to having the uh, <laughs> having that smoke extractor. Hey, that looks good. So once I get all these soldered in and get the board working, I'll go back and I, I've got some uh, isopropyl alcohol and some flux remover. So I hit it. I hit all of these with the flux remover, and then I've got some, some hard wipes and alcohol, and then I just kind of clean it. And so it'll be absolutely clean. You won't even be able to see that any work's been done. I didn't do that for years, and 
I just didn't know that it was something that that I needed to do. I mean, we don't always do it, but I like to make it make it look clean if I can. All right, put this out of the way. Let's do this again and pop back up here. Let's see what we get. High score save. Everything checks out. All the RAMs are good. The ROMs are good. All right, let's see what we got. Let's see if we actually get a coin sound when we coin up. We didn't last time. Here we go. Ah, all right, we've got our sounds back. I'm gonna try to give it a little play. I'm only using my left hand, and I'm right-handed, so it'll be kind of fun. Whoops. Whoops. Well, we, start, we heard the start of that long fall sound. That's what I wanted to hear. Make sure it's working, too. Let's see if the long fall sound happens. Alright, well, the long song fall did happen and the camera stopped. Um, it's only taken uh, three minute clips. I don't know why. So I'm going to uh, probably move to a different camera. <laughs> anyway, we um, I took the high score save kit off because we haven't we haven't tested these ROMs yet. Um, and it's uh, and I put the CPU back because we played from the high score kit, which actually has a copy of the uh, of the EEPROMs. So we put back the the Z80, and we're going to run off EEPROMs. I'm going to pop back up here. Boy, is this I'm having a difficult time with this camera holder here. I'm going to dim the lights again, and we'll try to see if we can get that long. Or we can do a little play and make sure everything's working and see if we can get that long fall sound again before the camera stops and dies so all right there's a there's a uh, credit there we go we're still getting uh there we go Let's try climbing the ladder there, or the vines. I don't mind if I get caught right there, because it'll prove I've got the sound and then I'm, I'm good to go. Wow! It's, there we go. So we should get a long fall sound and then a boom. And we did! So looks like we're good to go. So what do we fix on this one? We we used a high score save kit. It it uh, first it booted up just to briefly show the screen, you know, garbage, then went away. Which if if the game's dead, it'll just show garbage. So we knew something was running, but we didn't know what. Uh, popped in the high score save kit, and um, it showed two ROM errors. Replaced both of those ROMs. And uh, fired it up and everything worked. We still didn't, we were missing all digital sounds. So, so with all digital sounds missing, they were really low if I turned the volume way, way up. And um, it turns out it was the LM324, which is a, a nice little preamp. Put that back together. So I think in the next thing I'm going to do is turn the board over. We're going to clean it. Um, we're going to remove the... Um, this is a really clean board. It's beautiful. Um, both sides are clean. And um, I'm just going to take a little extra care and remove the, the flux from the, uh, from the new repairs. And um, we'll do that. And hopefully the camera will stay running for long, long enough. And then I'll 
pop together and I'll let it play test for oh, a few hours and then uh, I'll play it a couple times during the night or the evening and then we'll um oh I see what's happening it looks like it's running out of RAM uh huh all right, let me empty the camera and I'll come back and I'll uh, I'll do that. All right, we're back. Let's see. Let's. Uh... All right, we've got these three. Three areas of the board where we actually soldered. So we're going to gonna take just a tad of this. Uh, this is flux remover from MG Chemical. It seems to work pretty darn well. So I just take a hair, put it in the top. And I use a little toothbrush. Just break up that. Uh, probably should be using uh, gloves with this. In fact, I might, I might put a little on. In fact, the fume extractor really works with this stuff too. You can put that over it and it just kind of, you don't know, inhale any of this stuff. It's not terrible, but it's not great. So, you just put a little bit of this in. Now we get the soldering. And it cleans it up real well. If you let it sit for very long, it won't clean up at all. It looks pretty bad. So after that's done, we we'll basically take this and put it drain back in. And then we've got these little cloths and some 99% alcohol. <laughs> Isopropyl alcohol works really well. Basically, it just uh, just daub off the excess. Keep it from. You don't need to be patting the board so hard. It's just to kind of get off all of the flux that we removed. The toothpaste with the toothbrush. Not toothpaste. It would be funny. strings of this off. Alright. I think that's it. I think now that I've done that, I'm going to give it a bath. 
take out all the socketed chips. And literally, literally give it a bath. It's pretty clean, but I want to take off the rest of that flux with a little bit of a little bit of soap. So I could leave it this way and it'd be fine. You can see now, you can't see at all where I've done the work. I replaced this chip and this chip and you cannot see any flux there at all. It looks pretty good. Same with the, the LM324 here. You can't really tell it's been soldered at all. It looks nice thing about a clean board is it looks factory. Once there's no residue, the only way you'll ever be able to tell is if you turn it over and look at the date codes on the chips because, well, they're newer. Uh, these two RAMs are from, well, it looks like 8436, so that's 1984, 36th week, I think. And this guy is a pretty much, let's see, the LM324 is... Well, it doesn't say. I don't understand the date codes on them. But anyway, it's a modern Texas instrument part, so. Um, looks good. All right. I'll come back when it's all been, when I've cleaned the back of the board again. All right, we're back. <clears throat> Uh, the board's been cleaned. This, I was able to keep the, the tag. I, I hate to get rid of these tags. When, sometimes when you clean the boards, you lose that. So it looks pretty darn good. Both sides. And we're going to put it back together and give it another test here. All right, get power to both boards. I gotta figure out a better way to do this up here because I hate to have to turn the lights out every time we want to look at that. There's got to be a way to hang a piece of cardboard or something up there so it doesn't doesn't reflect as bad. Anyway, all right, let's go. Turn this down and power. Whoops! I better turn on the monitor. This monitor is missing. It's got a loose blue pin. I got to take it apart. There's a. It's an old Amiga. It's a 1084S, and it has a DB9 connection in the back. And it works great, except the blue pin is uh, has spread just just a hair, you know. So the pin goes in, and it looks great. You tighten it down. And then you come sit down and there's no there's no blue. And so it, it's that loose pin in the socket. So I actually need to take apart the back of the thing and and push the you know push the pins back together or the how the um, I don't know what the receptacles back together so that when you put the DB9 in, it will actually uh, make contact all the time. And so anyway, that's what's going on with that. But hey, there it is, it's up. Looks pretty good. Let's give a give it a credit or two and start a game. Very nice. Well, I'm gonna turn this down because I need to. Ah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> 
up. There we go. That's pretty horrible, I would say. That was pretty bad, but hey, 1,200 points. <laughs> oh, so it runs. All the sounds are there. It's looking good. Let me put this back up. And uh, well, I don't know if you guys have seen this. You've seen it probably in my other videos. This is my original test station. You know, Bob Roberts years ago put up a. Uh, an article on how to build a, t a JAMA test rig and what they used to use them for is they build little boxes with all the controls in it and the isolation transformer and generic uh, controls so they could take it to a, a location and actually plug in the game board to it and make sure it worked or they could take the control panel off it and plug it into the game to make sure that the game control panel was working right. Um, and it wasn't the wiring, and then they could test monitors on it too. Well, this was an old desk that I um, I had, and I cut it up into pieces, and and basically mounted all the buttons. I've got player one, button one, two, three, button one, two, three, two start buttons, and your coin button. This sometimes I have it wired as service, and this one is start. Or, and uh, then I've got on the side, there's a test switch, and then the on-off button in the back. And it, it's pretty simple. Um, got a nice little old Wicko joystick in it. It's been in there forever. And the bottom, I don't know if we can actually we'll try to show it here. Let's see. So basically it looks like this. It's kind of messy. Just got your joystick. It's just got a JAMA harness, basically. It comes in. Your power supply back here, it's got an isolation transformer, power off the back, so if you want to run a, a game monitor, you can. Uh, it's got a built-in speaker, just a standard 8 ohm, it's an AudioVox car speaker. Uh, you got your, air, your filter and your, you know, it's wired just like a game. And uh, this, this comes in handy, I've used this on my bench forever and ever. Uh, I may move my monitor back on top of this. I have I, I've been I've been leaving it on the side like this, uh, so I can get to the switching power supply to turn it up and down depending on the game I'm working on. But I may um, I may just put it back like this. Let's see. Normally, it's it's down here. And that way I can put this on here, have the monitor sitting right on it. I can turn it up, turn it down, and uh, get the play test right here with the game board right next to it. And so it's kind of neat. Um, anyway, I've had it for, gosh, I built this. I think this is the first thing I ever built when I started buying and repairing game boards. So. Is this is from 1998, I would assume, and I've, I've gone through several power supplies. I've had to add buttons because I didn't have them, uh, and some other things. It really, I really need a way to test player two also with this thing, but um, so I, I've, I've come up with a little fingerboard that plugs in between uh, the JAMA harness itself, and you can actually, um, and it has a ribbon cable on it, so you can test player one controls or player two controls. But, but I really like this. And I think I'm going to move that monitor. I think I'm going to take that monitor. Hmm. Well, I'm back. As I was saying, oh, the blue's out. You notice that again? Watch. There we go. Now we got blue again. Anyway, I need to fix that. It's been irritating me for months. Uh, but I might just bring that back down here, and uh, that way it's just sitting on the bench. Gives me some more storage up here, and um, yeah. 
So that's pretty much it for for this um, this repair. I'm really excited it went so well uh, for for one of the first full length repairs that that I've put up on a video. And let me know if uh, this is something you guys like. And if you do, um, you know I'll do more of them because I get boards in all the time and. Um, I've got stacks of boards that that need to be cleaned after we had the the um, the fire. So we I've been going through and trying different techniques to clean them, and um, so that's a uh, that's been interesting. You know everything from ultrasonic cleaners to just scrubbing with a scrub brush, and uh, you know maybe even I could go into how how that works. But it's all been I've been very fortunate. A lot of the, a lot of the stuff we had, we were just able to reclaim, and it just takes time to, to clean it up and test it working, or test it, or get it working, and and um, and move on from there. So thanks again. Um, you guys have a great day, and uh, let me know if you like the video. All right. Bye now.